Hi, I'm Corey from the First Nations Health Authority Environmental Public Health Team. Today we're going to go over how to take a water sample. Once you have chosen your water sampling locations, you are ready to take your drinking water samples. This video will show you how to properly collect a drinking water sample before processing it. This process can be applied to both CollieLert and accredited lab sampling. The proper collection and handling of drinking water samples is critical for obtaining valid results. You must always collect your samples directly into sterile sample bottles. Generally, you will collect your drinking water samples from taps located at predetermined sampling points. Before leaving to take your samples, be sure to prepare your sampling kit. Your kit should include a cooler with ice packs to store samples, approved sterile sample bottles containing sodium thiosulfate, permanent marker for labeling, pen and field sampling data sheet to record the details of samples taken, for example, sample site, location of sample, date and time of sample, free chlorine residual and total chlorine residual, chlorine testing kit, lint-free cloth or wipes, alcohol swabs or bleach solution. Please know your samples will need to be processed within 24 hours for accurate results. Plan your sampling accordingly. Wash your hands before you take water samples. However, if hand washing is not possible, use hand sanitizer or an alcohol swab to disinfect your hands. Your hands must be clean. If they are dirty, they may contaminate the water sample. This may lead to incorrect data and will require resampling in these locations, even though the water in the distribution system may be perfectly safe. Sampling collection procedure. Start by removing any attachments on the faucet. For example, aerators, water purification devices, screens, etc and be sure to check for any O-rings or other seals that may remain in the faucet. Disinfect the tap with an alcohol swab or diluted bleach solution of one part household bleach to 10 parts water. Disinfecting the tap with a flame is not recommended as you could damage the faucet. Let the cold water run in a steady stream for two to five minutes. As a general rule, you should keep the water running until it reaches a constant temperature. If the faucet is at the end of a dead-end line, allow the water to run longer. This is necessary as water at the end of the dead-end lines may have become stagnant. Using an approved sterile sample bottle containing sodium thiosulfate, fill out all applicable information on the sample bottle label before you collect the sample. Sample location ID, sample location name, date and time. Reduce the water flow before you take your sample. The flow should be slow enough to ensure that none splashes while you are filling the sample bottle. The water flow should be the width of a pencil. Hold the base of the sample bottle and remove the cap with your free hand. Hold the cap between your fingers, pointed down to avoid contamination. Make sure you do not touch the inside of the cap or the bottle with your fingers. Do not use the sample bottle if the cap is loose or cracked, the seal has been broken, the bottle appears dirty, or there are any other conditions that make you doubt the quality or cleanliness of the bottle. Do not dump or rinse the bottle before filling it. The white powder is sodium thiosulfate, which neutralizes the chlorine in the sample. If you ever have any questions about where to sample, contact your friendly community environmental health officer, or you can email environmental.health at FNHA. Replace the cap on the bottle as soon as it's filled. And place the sample in your cooler. If you drop the cap or bottle, or contaminate the sample bottle in any way, start the process over with a new bottle. To conduct chlorine residual sampling, please refer to the video called How to Use a Chlorometer to Measure Chlorine Residuals. It's part of this video series. Turn off the water and replace any attachments you removed. Fill out your field sample data log sheet. Here's a tip. You may want to pre-fill some of your data on your field data log sheet ahead of time. Once you've collected all your water samples, bring them to your community drinking water testing facility as soon as possible after sampling. You should perform your analysis within 24 hours of collecting the samples. If shipping samples to an accredited lab, fill out the chain of custody for the lab you are shipping to. Be sure the samples can be received by the lab within 30 hours of collecting the water sample. Keep the samples cool or refrigerated before analysis. If you ever have any questions about where to sample, contact your friendly community environmental health officer or email environmental.health at fnha.ca. Now that you've completed your sampling, it is time to process your samples. 
Watch the next video on how to process drinking water samples for more information.